Ladies and gentlemen, how are we doing? For Benif Digital, my name is Tess Waka. We're here at the Love Nairobi Festival, the launch, and we just had a press conference. Amazing things happening. You'll get more details on this channel. I'm here with Apostle Juma, and I got a moment to steal him so that he can tell us his involvement in this. Apostle, what is your involvement pertaining Love Nairobi Festival? I'm a leader in the city with the church and ministry, Life Church International, LFA TV. Right now, the Love Nairobi Festival is mobilizing all churches, all ministries, put our resources together, collaborate, partner, so that we can bring the gospel to the people of Nairobi. We are good news people. Anybody who brings good news, we are part of that person. Yes. And uh, Andrew Palau, through his father, whom we knew over the years, yes. Luis Palau from Argentina, is in the League of Billy Graham, the League of Bonke, the League yes. of that generation. Yes. So we are glad to see the next generation. Yes. And so when uh, they have come here in the city. We want to be part of that huge harvest coming in September. So I was to help in mobilizing, praying, and uh, mobilizing uh, people from our churches to be able not only to pray, but also to be counselors, to also to be able to reach out to their unsaved friends, invite them to this gathering that is coming at the University of Nairobi grounds. It's going to be huge. That's amazing. What does this mean for the nation of Kenya? This is what it means. After COVID, you know, many people lost hope. We're bringing hope. Number two, the world still needs to know yes. that somebody loves them. This is an event that is going to bring the love of God. When somebody pays attention to you, tells you good news that can help you, that can help you get out of the mess that is in, I think that's a good man. And we are those good people yes. bringing good news. <laughs> That Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amazing. There's a question I asked earlier about the, the training for the pastors. As an apostle, what do you think is the importance of training pastors? Did you see in COVID season, mm -hmm. when COVID came and pastors were going online, sometime doing broadcast or streaming with the phone inverted? <laughs> because in the old Bible school, there wasn't technology. Yes. So we have to keep doing refresher courses, yes. preparing leaders to know how do we evangelize. Paul told Timothy, do the work of an evangelist. Mm -hmm. Timothy was a young pastor. He's told to evangelize. Today's pastors are caring, feeding, taking care of those who are already born again. Mm -hmm. How do the pastors be reminded that actually they still have a responsibility to mobilize, to reach out to the unreached? Mm -hmm. So this training is like a refresher course. Matters on praying effectively, matters on mobilizing effectively, matters on winning souls effectively, matters of discipling. How do you disciple those that hear the good news and give their life to Christ. That's why it's important to train pastors. That's amazing. Maybe one last question. You recently did a conference uh, to gospel music ministers, yes. trained them, taught them, and, and, and what is the importance of having such things, especially right now in relation to what gospel music is, uh, how gospel music is doing and everything pertaining that. What was, the, what was happening in your heart for you to organize that? Because we've hardly seen such things. I'm glad that you heard about it. Yes. And I invited Evelyn <laughs> Wanjiro, and that's a story for another yes. day. Uh, God spoke to me that singers from this soil of Kenya have a unique sound that should reach out to the nations. The way we receive the, the sound from West Africa, South Africa and other nations. Tanzania recently is doing very well. What's happening to Kenyan sound? And so we were investigating, looking into those things. But first of all, I was activating, triggering a message that God wants your sound to be heard in the nations. But there are certain infrastructure things that must be done. Things like, do you lead a passionate do you love God, or are you looking for fame, or are you looking for money? Money is important, but how do you wade through the balance between the message, releasing your gift and your talent, putting in your skill, and ensuring you have the right character, so that you are not just a crook who is just singing and messing up people, whereas you're supposed to be inspiring and blessing them, you're actually messing them by the way you behave, like we've seen in the past. One of the things that amazed me is that we had very many music ministers that gathered. And now they're asking for another one. We're going to have season two. Yes. And then after that, we're going to be gathering them for two hours of prayer, maybe once a month. As a man of God in the city, I just want to bless the musicians and encourage them and tell them that there need not to be any cold war between gospel musicians and pastors. And so we have reached out as fathers, telling them we love you. We know that you are gifted by God. But guess what? This is one thing you must never forget. You must never forget. That no one gospel musician is called by God to stand alone. 
the order is stand alongside an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or a teacher. Like now in the coming Love Nairobi Festival, with an evangelist Andrew Palau standing in, we need singers who can sing evangelistic songs, songs that can be able to edify the people. So a singer is never supposed to stand alone, man solo, one man guitar. No, you are part of the body of Christ. You are part of. So you need to tag alongside those who are teaching, equipping, ministering the gospel, and then you are bringing in the music, like Jehoshaphat. They had trouble, and God instructed them in Second Chronicles 2020, I mean 20, that chapter, to set the singers in front so that this battle can be won. So today, singers must stand alongside the ministers, and ministers must stand alongside the music ministers, together as a family, to release sound that is going to go into the nations and be a blessing. You know, our Swahili language now is spoken in major languages in Africa. How about a song done by somebody like Evelyn and others? And that song is being played in many African nations. Millions of people will hear the good news. So that's what we are doing, triggering from a little small point of view. And we expect it to grow and become big. Yeah. Apostle Juma people, we are here at the Nairobi, Love Nairobi Festival. You had the message for all details pertaining the church and Christian news. Keep it here. My name is Tess for Bonif Digital.